Upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison. Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. This mass is being offered for the intentions of Nora Hopkins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Letters of the Hebrews. Be careful. The promise of reaching the place of rest God had for the Israelites still holds good, and none of you must think that he has come too late for it. We received the good news exactly as they did, but hearing the message did them no good because they did not share the faith of those who listened. We, however, who have faith, shall reach a place of rest, as in the text. And so in anger, I swore that not one would reach the place of rest I had for them. God's work was undoubtedly all finished at the beginning of the world. As one text says, referring to the seventh day, after all his work, God rested on the seventh day. The text we are considering says, they shall not reach the place of rest I had for them. We must therefore do everything we can to reach this place of rest. Or some of you might copy the example of disobedience and be lost. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, never forget the deeds of the Lord. <clears throat> the things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, we will not hide from their children, but will tell them to the next generation the glories of the Lord and his might and the marvellous deeds he has done. They too should arise and tell their sons that they too should set their hope in God and never forget God's deeds, but keep every one of his commands. <clears throat> so that they might not be like their fathers, a defiant and rebellious race, a race whose heart was fickle, whose spirit was unfaithful to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> when Jesus returned to Capernaum, word went round that he was back and so many people collected there that there was no room left even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men. But as the crowd made it impossible to get the man to him, they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was. And when they had made an opening, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven. Now some scribes were sitting there and they thought to themselves, how can this man talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Jesus, inwardly aware that this was what they were thinking, said to them, 
Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts? Which of these is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your stretcher and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I order you, get up, pick up your stretcher and go off home. And the man got up, picked up his stretcher at once and walked out in front of everyone so that they were all astounded and praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> now we know that forgiveness is a, an important part of being a Christian. That if someone uh, hurts you and they're sorry for it, or even if they're not, we are called to forgive them. Now only you can do that. Someone else can't do it on your behalf. Like uh, if a family or a friend or uh, a member or someone that you know uh, goes to the person that's hurt you and says, I forgive you, that doesn't work. It has to be you that forgives that person. It can't be anyone else. Now, the reason why I mention that is because um, the scribes here are, are getting upset because Jesus is saying, my child, your sins are forgiven. Because they know very, very well and rightly so that when we sin, we offend God as well as other people. But it's only God that can forgive the sins that are against himself. So only God can do that because if, if we are offending him, it's only him that can forgive those sins because it's him that we've offended. So when Jesus says, my child, your sins are forgiven, the scribes immediately know what Jesus is saying. He's saying that he is God made man. He can forgive sins because it's him that's been offended. They know that, which is why they, they challenge him. And they challenge him because they, they know that Jesus is saying, I can forgive sins because I am God. So that is why we see the, um, the healing of the paralysis afterwards. Now, what he's saying here is you doubt that I'm God made man and have the authority to forgive sins therefore. So I'm going to prove to you who I am, which is why the, the child is then miraculously healed. And so here we see really our Lord revealing who he is. Now throughout the whole of the gospel he does this. Um, right from the beginning when people uh, are coming and they, they, they're kneeling before him. Well, you only kneel before God. Uh, and here, once again, we see the, the power uh, that's in Jesus Christ because of his identity coming out of him. So today, let's pray that that power that, that Jesus revealed in this gospel is once again felt in our land, in our world. We know that at the moment our world is, is hurting. So let's go to him. Let's ask him to reveal that power so that the world once again can be healed. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. <coughs> 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may your people's oblation, O Lord, find favour with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jews so that there may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those put to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be saved for eternal life. The body of Christ. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, our Holy Mother of God. And may the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in